Welcome to Epic Elite Deal and the Demon. Here I am in the Evening Star Cavern, and I'm starting here because I wanted to talk about navigating the demon web. And I talked about this a little bit in a video I did a while ago when I did a Trial by Fury. But I think it's worth mentioning again because uh, even still today, we have a lot of people that find the demon web to be a very confusing place to traverse. So I'm going to talk about just some real basic strategy to get it where you want to go very easily without going through any rigmarole. Uh, first, I'm starting here because I also wanted to mention that you can get to the demon web from either the center portal or the left portal in the cavern and it takes you to different places inside of the demon web. You may not have realized that. So I do have my map complete here if you come in from the center portal, this is where you are over here. And if you come in from the left portal, it puts you up here. So, the first thing I want to mention is that you'll see a lot of groups. You come in here and they'll check to see if this strand is up. There's the strands here, the connecting strands. Some of them are random, or I should say, in every instance, they can be a little bit different. You're not going to find random strands, but, you know, for example, there sometimes can be a strand that connects these two. And, and, it, and if it's there, it's really easy just to come down here and just go straight across. And, that, and you know, it's going to take you down here, and you just go straight across to either of them. And what some people will do is they'll keep recalling out until they see that strand. Well, that's just a lot of silliness. And you don't need to do that if you understand just a really basic thing here in the demon web. Um, so... If you've spent some time in here, you probably know that when you jump off, you get teleported somewhere. And it, there's like three or four different places that you can be teleported to. And there's one spot in particular that we are interested in. Now, there are three quests out here. Um, this is uh, Trial by Fury. This is Deal in the Demon, which is where we're going. And then this is Reclaiming the Rift. Now, if you jump off, one of the places you can be teleported to is right on this island where uh, Reclaiming the Rift is. So you just keep jumping off until you get there. And, you know, it's, it's, there's some randomness involved, so you, you may find yourself having to jump off a dozen times. Sometimes you get to the first try, it's just, you know, the roll of the dice. You know, another spot you can teleport to is like up here, and I think there's like one over here or something. I, I don't know, but really the two points of interest are you know teleporting basically directly to reclaiming the rift and then the other point of interest for teleporting to is this island sort of right here in the middle it's a very distinctive shaped island so even if you don't have your map filled in it's usually pretty easy to see uh, it's a very wide island right here in the middle it doesn't look like any of the others just remember it's you know, really short and wide and that's the island that we want to go to. And if we can teleport there, from there it's very easy to get to the other two quests, Deal on the Demon and Trial by Fury. So if you're going to Trial, you just from here, you're just straight down. If you're going to the one we're going to, it's, it's straight down and, and then straight across. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to jump off and let myself teleport. And here I made it first try, so I got a little lucky. You sort of loop up around here. And now we're going south. And this is going to take us basically right to Trial by Fury. So if we were going to Trial by Fury, we would just jump down right there. But we're not. We're going to start heading to the east. And it's just straight across. And you you know, you don't have to fight anything on your way. Everything in here is pretty slow. Just run right by it if you don't want to fight it. And here we are. Boom, it's that easy to find your way around the demon web. So don't you know, stop with the rigmarole of, you know, jumping out and looking for that instance with the strand, because it's just not necessary. Okay, so I am level 22 now. 
that means I have Epic reincarnated again. So now I have uh, a third divine Epic past life. So three divine, three primal, halfway to, well, more than halfway now, to Epic completionist. So I'll need six more total. If you don't know how Epic completionist works, uh, it's worth mentioning real quick that you need three past lives from every sphere. And it doesn't matter which past lives they are. You could have one from each over here, or you could have two from one and one from another, or you can have three from the same. Um, as long as you have a total of three in each sphere, a total of three epic past lives from each sphere, that will give you epic completionist, and it will, it will give you a fourth twist of fate. Totally awesome. Now, uh, they have just announced that they are considering adding another twist of fate uh, when the level cap is raised to 30. Dude, don't quote me on that. I mean, they said they're thinking about it. That's a fact. But whether or not we'll see it, that remains to be seen. That would be gigantic. Um, and I suspect that we'll know the answer to that by the time this video comes out. This is, I think, going to be episode 20. And by the time we get to episode 20, uh, it's going to be right around the time that update 29 is released. And since I have my Epic Destinies opened, I think it's been a while since I talked about it. Uh, I just wanted to show you the twists that I'm using while epic leveling. So Empyrean Magic, that is just a must-have for an Enlightened Spirit. It's so freaking awesome. Uh, you're basically running around with an all-on 20% Sacred Bonus to Universal Spell Power and an all-on 10% Sacred Bonus to Critical Chance uh, with all spells. Um, so the way that works, if you're not familiar with it, it's when you cast a Fire, Light, or Healing spell, you gain a stack of Empyrean Fervor. And for every stack, you get a plus 2 Sacred Bonus to Universal Spell Power, and plus 1% Sacred Bonus to Critical Chance, and that la at last 10 seconds stacks up to 10 times. Well, because you're constantly hitting with Light uh, spells from your Burst and your Aura, it's, it's basically running at, at 10 at all times. Um, even on Ginger Spice, I can, I can uh, with the Druid, who's a cold Druid, I can get that to run at 10 most of the time just by, you know, using Produce Flame a lot. Okay, enough about the Druid. But uh, in, in Unyielding Sentinel itself, this is exactly the same as I have it on Ginger Spice. I also have a Fae Form here. This gives me a little bit of damage reduction, which is nice. It's DR7 slash Cold Iron and 15 Universal Spell Power. That is an awesome twist. And then I have Rejuvenation Cocoon for the added um, healing. On the enhancement side, this is really the same. The only difference is, you know, I said before that at end game I would drop the SLA of displacement because I didn't really feel like I needed haste by end game, uh, at end game, but I, I just don't really feel like I need it at all. I just decided to just forego haste, take the displacement spell and then go with the heal lamp instead. Just a choice. Everything else is the same. For gear, got some changes here. So, uh, I don't think I've talked about this before in my videos, but uh, so I, I always like to have some quest in DDO that I don't know. It sort of adds a little bit of mystery, you know. So there's always one quest that I'll purposely avoid because I, I just want to feel like I don't know all the content. And there's just some little bit of unknown, adds a little bit of mystery, and 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 I don't know, call it weird, whatever. Uh, and throughout my time playing the game, there have been different quests that sort of held that position. You know, at one point I had never done Master Artificer for a long time. I think about a year ago was actually the first time that I did that one. Um, the pit held that spot for a while, so... Um, but the quest that most recently uh, held that spot was Terminal Delirium. I, I had never run it before. I walked in there one time, like right after it came out with Ginger Spice on Epic Elite Solo, and I just got obliterated with the first Beholders, and I never went in there again. There wasn't really anything I wanted, and I just sort of wanted that to be the one quest that was, you know, that I didn't know. I know it's kind of silly, but uh, because it, it, it's sort of a psychological little trick I'm playing with myself. Because if you feel like you just know the game inside and out, you know everything about it, you, you know, you can get bored with it. 
and so I just want to have that one little little thing out there. Okay, enough about that. Enough about my psychology. <laughs> but the reason why I decided um, so I decided I was going to do it because I was trying to figure out a necklace that would work, and I was looking at necklaces that I could use as like a, a, an epic, lovely necklace, and I saw the Vim and Vigor, and I thought, oh, that's freaking perfect. You know, it's awesome. It's awesome. Level 18, This is it has um, a green slot, which I put a topaz of conjuration focus, so it's just plus one. Um, strength seven, that's redundant from the gloves. Greater false life, uh, all on. Uh, or excuse me, greater heroism, all on. This is the lowest level item in the game that has all on greater heroism. Uh, so I don't have to scroll it anymore, at least for epic leveling. At end game, I will change this, but that's really, really nice to have that all on. And uh, I got it in my first run of Terminal Delirium, and I thought it was a really, really fun quest for what it's worth. A lot of people poo poo on it, and I, you know, I've heard a lot of people just trash that quest. But I, I went in there by myself at level 20 on Elite, so that was at level, and I didn't have any problem with it. Uh, and it was fun figuring it out. They did some neat things in there. Uh, I did die once in the, the balloon trap area. It doesn't mean anything to you if you don't know the quest, but um, I spent a lot of time in there because I didn't understand what I was supposed to be doing. I was looking for a balloon, so I kept going through that trap area like over and over and over and over and over again, and eventually it, it killed me once. But it wasn't a big deal because... It, when you die there, it puts you right in front of a shrine. But had I realized that I was the balloon, I wouldn't have continued to look for a balloon uh, for way too long. <laughs> Enough about that. Uh, so greater heroism, totally awesome. Greater false life is redundant from the shield. Natural armor 6 is pretty freaking cool. So very, very nice epic leveling necklace. Uh, I also have the Sage's skull cap now. So... Uh, when I did the video, I think it was two episodes ago, uh, breaking the ranks uh, to get this item, Radiance Lore 5 and Radiance 84, very nice item for uh, low epic levels for an enlightened spirit. Or any build, or any you know build that uses does a lot of light spell damage. Um, I've got these smoke goggles on, the green steel smoke goggles. This is the green steel item that I've talked about before where I messed it up. Uh, it was supposed to have plus six charisma skills on the final tier, and I accidentally put intelligence skills. I wanted charisma because that helps uh, my intimidate. So that's a big part of getting to that no-fail intimidate that I talked about before for, you know, like endgame epic elite raids now, fire on Thunder Peak, Temple of the Death Worm. Um, Breastplate of the Shining Sun, so I've been using this for a few epic lives now. Uh, so I'm doing this quest, I've been farming this because I want to get the Terror Web Kite and Breastplate. And I want to get one of the, it comes in a lot of different varieties, but I want to get one of the Constitution. And it's basically an upgrade from this armor. It has basically the same stats, but it has like a, a stat on it as well. It doesn't have Empower Healing too. I don't care about that. Um, it can be upgraded to have the Amanatar's Blessing, but I'm not even going to bother with that. But uh, for level 22, it's a really, really solid medium armor option. I think everything else is the same. I haven't had this for too long, so I'll mention it again in case you didn't see it in a previous video. The Night Singer's Mantle seems really cool uh, for an Enlightened Spirit, or, or, or I should say for a Fae Pact Warlock. It's got Perform 15, so that affects your Sonic Spell Power. It's got two slots, Blindness Immunity and the Night Singer 5% chance on Sonic Spell Hit. So that's all my bursts and aura and blast. That's a uh, chance to blind for six seconds. Although I can't say that I've noticed that procking a lot. I kill stuff so fast, though, so I could very easily just not have noticed. And this is a relatively new addition, the Epic Ornamental Dagger uh, from Crystal Cove. Uh, so I noticed that it's got the yellow slot, which is really lame. They need to change that to a red slot. Uh, before, when this stuff came out, yellow slot was where spell power was was added in the old augment system. But spell power is now red slot. This really needs to be changed to a red slot. Come on, guys, this is so stupid. Okay. <laughs> All right. So level twenty-two. I don't know what the heck I want a yellow slot on a caster dagger for.
So this is on Epic Elite. That's level 25. That means I could do it up to level 27 and still get bravery bonus. Now I'm only level 22. So I'm three levels under. But it's going to be a piece of cake. Now if you want to, you can just run by these spiders. You don't even have to kill them. a very linear quest pretty easy quest the boss um, well even the boss fight's not bad he's, a, he's kind of a caster you can speed run this quest in about three minutes and I thought I had done a video I thought I had done a speed run on ginger because I could do it really fast with the the snow slide. And I can bypass some stuff that other tunes can't because snow slide lets you jump so far. Oh, she's blinded. That must be from the Night Singer's mantle. Cool item. Very, very cool item. champion spider that means we'll have to kill him because we want some remnants but I didn't get any If you're doing a speed run, you just run by all the spiders. Oops, where the heck am I going? You just <laughs> run by all the spiders. And you can actually run by these clowns too. This is another group of, you know, the a mistress and some drow. And you can stay there and fight them if you want. Or you just run by them. with the Odos. So you see I'm I mean you know three under level, I'm not even not even using displacement, not even using tensors. With the hit points and the defensive stuff built into it, it's just it's cakewalk. a few hits on me. No big deal. Can easily heal through it and just dance him again. And I talked about in you know another video recently like I don't even use shining through that often and I should get yeah, I'm gonna hit it now I should get in that in the habit of using it more but I just find it it's not not necessary unless I'm fighting particularly tough 
you know, hard hitting mobs. You don't want to intimidate him and have him not summon his guys. It does add some extra fighting, but you get the extra chest out of it. Uh, that spider, this spider, you can just run by. But he's a champion. I'm just going to run by him. Sometimes it'll keep those guys occupied and they just sort of stay up there and don't come down. It's fine. So this guy, you know, every, you know, when you approach him, he he just keeps moving. So it's it's kind of a pain to hit him with the, with the bursts. So I'm just gonna hit him. I'm just gonna change to blasting. And that way he'll just stay right there. Um, it's, it's really weird, because I totally thought I did a video of this. Because I remember being here and, and talking about some strategies for fighting this guy. And it, I searched my channel, I couldn't find a video. I wonder if I did the video and then just never posted it for some reason. But uh, if you're a caster, uh, you can just throw AoEs on this guy and he won't move. When you approach him, then he wants to like bugger off. And then, like, if you had Ice Storm or something on him, and he walks out of it, like that. But if you, you know, just stay at a distance and then throw your AoEs on him, and he'll just sit there. He's being particularly inactive right now. This is not the norm, but whatever. So, like, on Ginger Spice, you know, I have, I usually will sit there and swing my, my scimitar at mobs while I'm hitting him with spells, but with this guy I won't. I'll just stand back and cast at him because if I approach him he just keeps moving and walking out of my AoEs. I don't know what this guy's problem is, but he just acts weird when you when you don't approach him. This is a very quick and easy quest to farm. There are some named items that can drop here, including planar foci, tear web kite and breastplate, spider spawn, spawn comparison, which is the monk outfit. So I, I like to farm this one, you know, anyways, even if I'm not looking for something from it, because those those are great for my from great prizes for my games. And that's it, and that's all. You just gotta touch the orb to complete. Let's see what we get. Nothing there. Planar, focus of prowess, strength 8, and a legendary victory. Well, thanks for watching. If you have questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. If you have questions about the build I'm doing, you can respond in the Warlock forum on my build post, and if you happen to be on Saralona, you are welcome to send me a tell.